the Tornado Cleaning Gun. Why I have to have one of these and perhaps why you will come to the conclusion as to why you have to have one of these. I've got my bucket jockey. This is my interior cleaning uh, caddy. Now, as a rule, I'm going to either pick my Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner that is diluted down 10 parts of water to one part concentrate. I've got my super degreaser that is diluted down four to one. Four parts water to one part super degreaser concentrate. So based on how dirty the material is that I'm cleaning will determine which product I use. I also, as one of my favorite tricks, is I use the rapid remover. All these things you can find on my site. If you go to the show more area directly underneath this video, you will find links to my website that you can get your own products and help support my cause. Now, because I buy this in a gallon form, because I use so much of it, because it's such a useful product, I put it in a separate spray bottle. This is an amazing grease cutter, oil cutter, solvent, and not the traditional solvent, but it dissolves things that these types of cleaners will not dissolve. So these are my essentially my three tricks, my go-to products for cleaning anything on the interior, and it's just a case by case. I use this straight from the bottle in case, I know someone's asking out there as they watch this video. In my tank, it's strictly tap water in my solution tank for the Tornado cleaning gun. So I'm gonna show you. Let me set this up for you because here we are in my garage and my Denali gets parked, it gets backed in right here. So here's a spot that the differential of my Denali sits over and it used to leak before I got it fixed. So that oil is a big mess that's actually differential oil. This section here that's very dramatically clean, there and that little spot there, is when I first got the gun and I wanted to test it out and this was approximately two and a half to three months ago and as you can see it does an amazing job but I want to show you guys firsthand exactly me cleaning it so you can see it live and see the gun in action. So when I'm cleaning anything I'm going to pre-vacuum the area first. I often will take a scrub brush like this brush here and I will for example on my floor mat I will scrub this first and then I will vacuum it so that I bring up all the loose dirt and debris first and vacuum that away. So in this case here, because I know it's heavily saturated with dirt and oil, what I would do if this was on the floor mat is because I know that this will cut grease and oil better than even my super degreaser, I'm going to pre-treat this with the rapid remover, just like that. And I'm gonna scrub it in. And you can see how it already begins to break up that oil. I can't recommend, now don't pay attention to this label because this label does not represent the product that's actually in there. I just happen to like the spray bottle and the, the trigger sprayer. This solution, which is the rapid remover, actually requires a dwell time of anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds. Not minutes, but seconds. So it works very quickly. So I just break it up like that. Then I take my super degreaser, in this case, and I'm going to follow up immediately with this. And I'm going to scrub the area. Now as I begin to use the tool, the Tornador, the Tornador, call it what you want, you will hear my compressor turn on in the back. And I will get to that in a moment. So you have, with this dial, you can either shoot straight air or you can inject solution. Now I want to use some solution because I want to rinse away the dirt and the chemicals that are now on the carpeting. And by the way, see how well that broke that down already? And I haven't even touched it with this. 
So this is what I would call the cheap man's version of doing interior car, interior car detailing. So I've set this nozzle so that I have full maximum amount of fluid, which is tap water, that's going to be coming out of this along with the air. And there's my compressor going on. So just for kicks, let's see how well this machine, this tool, can actually use on the carpeting with no treatment whatsoever. It's merely just the compressed air that spins out of this tip and straight tap water. That was just straight air. So literally it breaks up the dirt and gets rid of it. Now let's try some water. So the first was straight air, the second was air and water. Clearly the air with the water does a better job. I did not even use a single chemical on that. To me that is pretty amazing and makes for a very compelling argument as to the effectiveness of this tool. So let me pre-treat this area with my super degreaser. That right there was my old school way of cleaning carpet and upholstery on the interior of cars. You can see that it's still very effective. And that's why I recommend a lot of you guys that are just starting out, this is how you can start out on a true sh shoestring budget is what I call it. Where you just need uh, the right chemical, some kind of scrub run, and a scrub brush can be any uh, relatively stiff nylon brush and by stiff you'll see how it's scrubbing very aggressively on my skin it is not doing any damage to my skin I don't want to scream out in pain so it's stiff but it's not that stiff so that was my old school way of doing carpeting and it's still very effective but it's not as nearly effective to me is the new Tornador gun. So here you've got good, here you've got better, and here you have best. Now this is where the oil spots were. So this literally, this section right here was nothing but water and air. Now that I've already done this, I'm gonna finish cleaning it with water and air from the gun. Now, one of the questions that might be going through your head is how wet is this carpet? Well, it's pretty wet, okay? Here in Southern California, if I left this just alone, it would dry pretty quickly in the direct sun if I had the ability to put this in the direct sun. So what I do though, is I will mop this up with a microfiber. <laughs> then I can take my gun and set it to air only and I can literally kind of fluff dry this area and help speed up the drying process. So let me talk shortly about cleaning brushes, okay? Aside from this one, which I got at Target, it's OXO. You can get that if you want. All these other brushes you can find on my website. Now, this would be more of a little, uh, kind of a detailing brush. It's safe for virtually anything, leather, carpeting, vinyl. Once again, I can use it on my hand. It's not going to draw blood. I'm not going to scream out in pain. This one from Mothers, I recommend for the more aggressive jobs because it does have a thicker, shorter, uh, more aggressive bristle to it. And 
even with that, I can still use it on my hand and it's not going to draw any blood. Okay, but it is uh, stiffer than these other brushes. This brush is really good because it gives you leverage and I really like it for the smaller, tighter areas where I really want some leverage with that handle. This one is even more for even tighter areas than this one because of the width of it. And so you might think this is overkill, but trust me, like any mechanic will tell you, the right tool for the right moment can make or break your world and just make your life that much simpler. So let's take this floor mat out of this, like I said, it's a 10 year old Escalade, had a hundred and something thousand miles on it. I've allowed my neurotic, blind, deaf dog to sleep on this for the past two months. I know for a fact because I know the original owner from this car. I actually borrowed this from a dealer that I do business with and it came out of his Escalade. And so I asked him the history on it and he said, no, it's never been shampooed. So not only does it just have 10 years worth of dirt, and it is the driver's side floor mat. You can see the wear pattern from the heel when Johnny owner drives it. But I also let my dog sleep on this for the past two, two and a half months just to absolutely soil it. And it is soiled, and I mean soiled in every possible way. Now unfortunately, it's not as light of carpeting as this is because in certain cars, in certain high-end cars, you get really light carpeting. And obviously the lighter it is, the more difficult it is to clean. So gray is a pretty good neutral color. It kind of hides dirt anyways. Um, not as much as black, obviously, but let's see the kind of results we're gonna get. So what I'm gonna do with this, because I know it's that dirty, is I will, and I'm gonna take my mo mother's scrub brush, and I will scrub this to break up the dirt as much as possible. You can already see the dog hair that's coming off of this, okay? I mean, it, that's just foul. And one thing I hate about shooting before videos on a camera is that it is so anticlimactic to you guys. When I know, I know that when I download this on my computer because I'm here live and I can see it firsthand when I look it out on my computer or in pictures it's like wow are you kidding me that doesn't even look that dirty so right here I know it doesn't even look that dirty to you probably but it is filthy and here's more dog hair so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna pre vacuum Don't underestimate the power of pre-vacuuming. All that dry, loose debris that is either sitting there to begin with or that you have broken up through the process of scrubbing, now it's just gone from the vacuum. Now all your other processes don't have to worry about that extraneous dry debris. So I know this is filthy. There's no obvious grease spots or heavy duty oil on it. So I'm going to go straight to my super degreaser. I'm just going to spray it until I know that I have complete coverage. And the rule is repeat applications are always better than you thinking that you're going to get everything in just one go. Now the old school method, this is where I would simply take a scrub brush a microfiber and mop it up and plenty of dirt obviously comes up okay and then I would just rinse and repeat and the more the more times I do this the less I need to spray on it each time so I just keep doing this until I have desired results once again this is detailing on a shoestring budget and it will get you very far because I can guarantee you on camera and in person, this already looks 80% cleaner than when I first started out. But there's more, folks, because now we've got the 
Tornado gun. The tornado cleaning gun. And there we have the final product. So you be the judge. Now you can see obviously right there is where the heel of the driver's foot is. But that carpet looks clean. And it is clean. And I know that within the context of the interior of your car, meaning once I put that into the car, my customer would be wowed by that. So this is why I become such a huge fan of the Tornor, Tornador, Tornador cleaning gun. So let's dissect it for a moment. Now this gun I think is about $200. I know that's what I paid for it. So it depends on when you come to the link. Uh, and maybe it'll change a little bit. So let me just show you the inside of it because it really is a quality piece of equipment. It's got this cool tube, this feeder tube, that's got this metal ball at the end. So literally, what that metal ball does is allows you, or allows the tool to suck up solution regardless of the angle in which you're holding the gun. You see how, this gra how gravity is pulling this ball down? If this was just a straight tube, it might stay up like that. Well, now it pulls down like this. What this means is that regardless of how your solution is, because you can see my water line here, if this was a normal tube, once that water line goes down below that, it's going to stop sucking juice. Same with this way. So that metal ball allows it to rotate regardless of how the water line is and it uses maximum amount of water to the very end. And it's a quality piece of equipment. It's got a big label made in Taiwan on it. Uh, you can interpret that however you want as to whether that means it's a piece of crap or not. But in my opinion, every bit of this hardware and attachments is nothing but quality from the plastics. I mean, this is not cheap plastic. I know that this plastic is a high grade plastic. This nozzle comes off and I'll show you the actual spinning head so you can see there's a slight bend to this and this just sits and spins at a high rate of revolutions as the compressed air shoots through it and that's what breaks up the fibers and the water or the solution is injected out that nozzle as well and that's what's controlled here and it's got this air regulator here so you can adjust how much air is actually coming through this uh, nozzle so it is a serious piece of equipment. Some of you might think 200 bucks is crazy. It didn't matter to me because it's one of those moments where I can afford it and if it works, then I'm sure as heck gonna use it and I do and I love it. But unfortunately, that's not the only variable to this tool because you need an air compressor to run it. So this is where I got my cool uh, 80s retro neon green air compressor hose is called Flexzilla. It's 3H in in that's it says 3H ID. That means inside diameter. It's rated for 300 psi, which is far more than you need. So something that you need to be pay attention to. On this, it says it needs a 4.5 to 6.5 bar. What that means, it's more about volume of air, um, and I think that's foreign. For us in America, what you're looking for is C, or I'm sorry, SCFM, which stands for, I don't remember actually, it has to do with volume of air, which what that means in layman's terms is that the compressor that you choose to buy, because this does go through quite a bit of air, is you need the right amount of PSI, you need the right amount of volume. So this is where, let me take you to my van, and I've reconfigured my van yet for the thousandth time, and I've got my cool DeWalt. It is a 200 PSI. Here we go. 
4.8 SCFM at 90 PSI. So there's this trade-off. So the higher the PSI you need, which is pounds per square inch, the lower the SCFM will be, which is the volume of air. So let's say I reduce that down to 45 PSI. Well, this number would then rise to like a 5.6 or maybe a 6.4, whatever. So this is the winning combination. It's a 1.6 horsepower, by the way. And it's a 15 gallon tank. So if I use the Tornado gun for, let's say, 45 seconds, at full speed, full volume of air, at not, and I have this set for, looks like just 95 PSI, and this is cool, this generator, or I'm sorry, this compressor, because I can set the PSI, and it's, it's rated for 200 PSI, so in the tank, it's gonna shut off once it reaches 200 PSI. But it's gonna deliver, based on how you set this gauge, which you adjust here, it's going to deliver the volume of air at whatever you set this gauge for. And I have it set for 95 PSI, which is within the safe zone of using the Tornado cleaning gun. So I know a lot of you have asked, uh, what do I think of, well, you've asked what kind of compressor did I end up getting? What do I think of it? Well, I'm a huge fan of DeWalt anyways. I traded this in. Um, I had a Craftsman. I felt that that was assembled like a piece of crap despite having grown up using Craftsman tools. I know it's the poor man's tools for Mako and Snap-on, but anyhow. And then I've got my, of course, my DeWalt, yet again, rotary polisher, which I, w w they're just a workhorse. So I'm a huge fan of DeWalt. So I wasn't really too worried when I bought this. For me, it really had to do with the constraints of my rolling mobile auto detailing operation. So I could have got one that was set vertically, but it would have went up too far onto the roof. So I had to get this horizontal one. So it really is about finding that perfect combination between power, size, cost, durability. It's like anything else in life. So I hope you've learned something. Once again, follow the links to my website if you want to get your own tool. I appreciate in advance all your support. I appreciate your questions and your comments. You can follow me on Instagram. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. So check that out. As a rule, you can always find me under Auto Fetish Detail. Now, I know some of you are looking behind the scenes and you probably saw my uh, steamer in the background, my VX5000. Yes, there is a comparison test that is in store. I will do a direct comparison between the Tornado and the VX5000. The simple answer is that they both have limitations like every, every other tool in life. They both have their pluses. Now, because I can afford it, I wanted them both and I'm in love with both of them. If I had to pick between one or the other, ultimately it's going to be a case by case situation as to the type of cars you're working on and the types of fabrics you're working on because um, there is many variables to consider. What part of the country? What are your weather conditions like? Uh, one requires uh, a lot of equipment as in space like a compressor so there's a lot of variables to consider so it's worthy of its own video but just know that i love both of them and it will be a tough decision if you have to pick between one or the other i'm just happy that i could get both of them i use both of them so hope you've learned a little something about the uh tornador cleaning gun today